slight change of pace. Let's have a look at the rest of the front. That'll be a headlamp adjustment screw. Yep. Let me guess, the indicators have got to come off. What can't you do with a ratchet strap? All right, the job we're going to do now is one of those that you quite often get as an MOT failure. Um, and a lot of people at that point just give up and send the bike to their mechanic. Well, on a bike like this, especially something as small and light as a 125, um, quite often is actually a fairly simple process. Just requires a bit of grit. You'll see what I mean in a second. So um, we're going to take this shock damper fork tube assembly apart. Starts with the top cap. I've got both apart here. Do make sure if you're doing the same thing that you keep the parts matched up. We've got a spacer. And then if we compress this, I think you're going to have to stand back a little bit to see. Be careful because this is full of oil. Eventually we're going to be able to get our finger in and get a washer and pull the spring out slowly or it will just bring all the fork oil out with it all over the bench. You can see there's actually a progressive rate spring, it gets closer at the top so remember to put it back with the um, top at the top. And so now we're going to have to um, look a bit further down the shock. So down here we need to get this dust cap off, which is nice and easy because it's absolutely fallen apart. Always worth ordering new ones. And we're going to need to spin this round because believe it or not, in this rusty pit, there is going to be a circlip. Now I still don't have circlip pliers, even though I mentioned the other day that I needed circlip pliers. Um, and I've been to a shop since, so I could have picked up circlip pliers. So instead we're going to do this the uh, teenager in his bedroom way. If I can find both parts of the circlip. Looks like this one might be um, suitably crispy. Fair warning, if you're going poking around in here, obviously be careful not to mar the... Um, 
the stanchion. Let's see if we can rotate this around a little bit. Might knock some of the crud off. No, that's not going anywhere. Okay, the WD-40 has helped us to find where that hole is supposed to be. Careful clamping on these, by the way. See me clamping it in the vise. Um, they're only made of light, lightweight cast aluminium. They will shatter or crack if you are overzealous with the vise. You'll see why it's clamped in a vise in a minute. Okay, we've got the circlip to move, and in this case to spray WD-40 all over my face. Well, that's one way of doing it, I suppose. In case you're wondering, again, not circlip pliers, but this interesting little pair that I got out of Lidl for like $3.99. So now that that's out, there's also... There's kind of no point in digging around for this, because it's going to come out next anyway. Um, but it can get jammed up, cause you grief. It's just a, it's a thrust washery kind of thing. It's uh, really rotten in this shock absorber. Next thing next, um, we want to get the oil out. And if you tip this up, you'll see it's full of fork oil. You're going to want to work the shock a little bit. This differs um, with all of these, whether it's better to try and move it, then tip it up or whether it's better to tip it up and then try and move it. The oil goes through a damper assembly, as you can probably hear. And it's the point of that damper assembly to resist movement. So you want to get the oil out to the point where you can easily slide in and out and then back in the vise. Now it's going to differ entirely based on um, your shock but you want to get it in the vise again not too tight but so that it resists this movement because this is the brutal bit coming up. Right and now I'm going to put my hand on my vice because it's not very well uh, held down to the desk. We're going to use this as a slide hammer to drive up on the inside of the seal. It may seem like nothing's happening for quite a while. And if it's the seal's badly seized in, nothing will happen. Bit of penetrant, patience, some people use a bit of gentle heat. Um, this is one of those things, right at the point that you don't think it's going to happen, it will happen, and then you'll get to the next one and be just as frustrated, and then all of a sudden it will come out. You can probably see more clearly than I can while I'm doing this. The seal's actually lifted up. So it's on its way. And then just like that, you're going to get showered in uh, oil. And it's going to come apart. There's your oil seal, a fending item. And now take this out slowly, because it's covered in fork oil. And then, also beware, you may or may not have more parts down here. 
There's the damper rod for this shock, which has a piston on the bottom. And I'm just putting all this stuff in a big tall tub, just out of shot, um, where it can drip dry. <laughs> refitting is the reverse of removal mostly um, what I'm probably going to do here is give these a good clean out try and avoid using water if you can um, I'll probably use a bit of brake clean something like that might even go with kerosene it's quite a good one basically you don't want to introduce anything in here that's going to allow it to rot because you're going to seal it back up and try as you might you probably won't keep, get all the water out unless you bake it in the oven or something like that. So I'm going to go and do that and then I'll come back to reassemble. Got a little jar of kerosene here. My recommendation on this by the way is um, don't buy kerosene. Find somebody who has a kerosene based heating system, so oil fired heating. There's usually a drip pot if they've got a filling loop that hangs under that in case anything drips back out. If not, there might be a test point or a bleed point on their tank. Um, ask them nicely if they can uh, gift you a little bit of their kerosene. You might or might not be able to see down there, but that's much cleaner now. Just make sure while you're looking at this that all the surfaces in here are in okay condition. This one was pretty rotten, but it looks all right. You want to care mostly about where the seating surface of the seals go. If that's all cracked and missing, it's not going to let the seal sit flat. And um, as a result, the seal's going to perish fairly quick. As with all seals and bearings and everything, one of the most important things about keeping them in a way that extends their life is that the mating surfaces are flat, flush and clean um, to give the, the seal or the bearing something to lean up against. I'm going to leave that upside down, strip kerosene all over the, uh, all over the place and I'll sort the others out. What am I talking about others? It's only one front wheel. I'll sort the other one out. To again quote the Haynes manual, refitting is the reverse of removal. In this case with a tiny bit more cleaning I think. All I'm really trying to do is get the the heavy built up sludge off of these things. Okay, like new. It's amazing what something sitting in oil for most of its life will do to its uh, brilliance. Makes quite a satisfying noise. Grab myself a socket. Oh wait, that's not a socket head. I was going to say grab myself a socket and uh, spin that round to make sure it seats properly, but um, I can't see a square edge down in the bottom for it to mate up with, so I'm going to assume it's to do with fluid control. Okay, got this. Same game as well, all cleaned up. Okay, metal just slips in there, shouldn't require any force. And as you can see, this pitting pretty much stops at the very bottoming out point. So we're not going to be running over that pitting regularly when riding the bike. That doesn't mean 
that um, that it's not a bad thing. But assuming our MOT tester is not too stringent, it should mean that we're allowed to uh, ride the bike, and it should mean nothing's going to explode when we do. I've got some fork oil here, as specified in the workshop manual for the bike. It is SAE 15 weight. Just going to pour a little bit out into the cap here. And with my new seal, just uh, see if I can show you. Get it nice and greasy. All around. The bit with the spring that you can see faces downward. I just want to be very careful maneuvering this over the top. Probably slightly off camera for you. And then I'm just going to use the rest of that. I can actually feel that grinding over that that pitting which makes me feel a bit nauseous now depending on how well equipped you are you may or may not have a tool for this but as you can see the seals nearly down I do happen to have a fork seal driver tool which is basically a two-part slide hammer that um, wallops the seal down. See, this one, I can't remember when I bought this one, um, but it was for doing the fork seals on a Honda DeVille, I think. I think, strictly speaking, this one is slightly the wrong size for this, and uh, if I can find a cable tie just to bring in the edges of this driver section then we should be able to uh, get it done without too much hassle okay fork seal driver is on here as I said if you're not so equipped um, there are plenty of other ways that you can do this Okay, had to get a bit unconventional there, but the seal's gone home. You can tell when it gets home because it starts to sound hard instead of hollow. Don't worry, I did put the washer in. I just did it before I remembered to hit record. Okay, you can see our new fork seal's working by how shiny that is. At this point, and before I forget, I'm going to put this uh, gator on. Which amusingly looks like it might not be the right size. Well, that's probably going to put our um, fork rebuild on hold. I wonder if the reason these are split is because they weren't the right ones in the first place either. Other side, same game. Clean everything off. Nice and shiny. Oh, 
pop that back together. Grab a new fork seal, give it plenty of oil. Even a bit on the stanchion. I'll show you up the top this time, so nice and gently. Oh, and we want to be make sure we're going um, with the spring facing down. Just gently maneuver this in place. Be really careful. These ends are normally round to help rounded to help you with this, but be really careful not to pinch the seal. And then just slowly but surely, no rush, work it down. As I showed you before, as the fork driver tool, this one is too big um, for these forks. So I'm going to kind of do it the way you might if you didn't have one of these tools. So find something as a drift, a piece of pipe that fits over this perfectly would be an excellent shout. I don't have one. Uh, if it could be plastic, that would be even better. I've seen people use a screwdriver and a hammer to knock them round evenly sort of like I'm going to do here but what you're really trying to do is not to uh, get this seal in bent because that will stress it out and kill it really quite quick you need to knock it home until you can see the groove where we took the circlip out before. Just go nice and slow. Making sure we go down evenly all the way around. Better to go in one millimeter increments here. than to twist the seal and wreck it. Can you hear that clack clack kind of sound? That means that we've bottomed the seal out. And we're making a, a good kind of knock knock on each side. I'm just looking round myself internally to see that the seal is equidistant from the uh, circlip ring all the way around, and it is. If we wanted to be really sure, we could give that a couple of nudges with the proper tool. Um, but honestly, <laughs> yeah, go and get the one for the size forks you've got. Okay, try not to let internal parts of your suspension escape down the back of your bench always good advice then on with the washer clean all this stuff up as you go you don't want debris and detritus riding around in your seals um, you saw how kind of rotten it was down there on the other one so I'm going to see if these work as well as they did before Okay, there it goes. I'm always paranoid about circlips. I always just test their seated with a screwdriver and then uh, with something, whatever. Just rotate them a bit, make sure they're not gonna suddenly ping out. It's sort of my way of seeing that they're definitely seated on both the squeezy side and the springy side. So that's definitely in there now. Before we go any further, just going to lift that up, 
wipe any schmutz we just got on there off and just see yep that's coming out nice and clean and the corrosion is just outside of the the stroked area so I'm going to go ahead and throw the spring back in this one and the washer so they don't lose them and then that's both of them in the same configuration ready to measure some oil in put the top caps back on um, and that will be two crudely but quickly rebuilt shocks and I think the four-coil was a tenner the seals were 6.95 off M&P and the gaiters were 15 quid but they don't fit so I've already ordered some what I would actually call gaiters the big rubbery tubey things because I think they look cool um, old MOT trick those to hide this so the MOT tester can't see it again as I said earlier you're just cheating yourself because if you if your seals go it's going to be you that's um, in trouble when your suspension's not working properly but hopefully they'll just um, cover this all up and we won't necessarily need to uh, find any new ones of these I might put these rotten old ones back on for now but uh, certainly all of that's got to be done before I put these back in the bike because there's no point in putting the tree back together again until um, to have sorted it out right I think that's me done for today I'm going to go and um, have some normal people fun and enjoy my week off and wait for some more parcels to arrive I think we're getting uh, fairly close now to having a rideable bike I had a look at the brake caliper by the way I'm going to stick it in the ultrasonic I've ordered a rebuild kit because buying one second hand is a hundred odd quid um, so it's probably worth trying to rebuild it but um, first I need to see what I'm seeing so I've removed all the rubber and everything I'm going to chuck it in the ultrasonic to bake for a little while and we'll see how we get on Peace.